Hey Vision Chasers, it's Dr. Bird here with another social studies lesson for you today. You know, the American Civil War caused so much death and destruction across the United States. Over 600,000 people lost their lives fighting this war. And what's also interesting is the fact that the seeds of this war were planted before this country even began. Yes, it's true. Even the colonists had sharp disagreements about slavery. And so whenever a war of this magnitude is fought, once that war is over, now it's time to rebuild what was destroyed. And so reconstruction is the perfect term to describe this period of United States history because the goal was to make America whole again, to reconstruct what was destroyed. And so in this video, I want to discuss with you three different plans that were proposed to reconstruct the United States. So let's begin with Abraham Lincoln's plan. In December of 1863, Abraham Lincoln delivered his proclamation of amnesty and reconstruction. And it was by this time that many of the Southern states were under, were actually under control of the union. Now, the first component of Lincoln's plan was to give the Confederates amnesty. Now, again, the Confederates are those who fought against the United States. Those, they were Southerners. And amnesty simply means to, they're, they're forgiven. So they won't be punished for fighting against the United States. Now, not everyone received amnesty. High-ranking officials of the Confederate government did not receive amnesty under Lincoln's plan. Other people not given amnesty included those who mistreated prisoners of war. Also, Southern states could be readmitted back into the Union if 10% uh, of the voters from the 1860 election took a simple loyalty oath. That's all that was needed for the state to come back to the Union. Now, keep this in mind, when a state comes back into the Union, that means that they have a state government and they also have representation in Washington, D.C. So those people in the states that were readmitted, they get to elect senators and representatives to go to D.C. and represent their state. Now, hold on to that fact, because that's going to be very, very important later. Now, Lincoln wanted to quickly begin the process of reconstructing the country. That's why he only required 10% of voters to take a loyalty oath. Definitely, these were easy terms for most Southerners to accept. Although Southerners had to accept the fact that slavery would be no more in the United States. You can argue that Lincoln's plan was very fair to the Southerners because it almost seemed as if he acted as if there was no war. Louisiana, Arkansas, and Tennessee thought that this was a fair deal and they qualify for Lincoln's 10% plan. And so they formed a new state government and they elected officials to go to DC to represent their states. Unfortunately, not everyone agreed with Lincoln's plan. Congress disagreed with Lincoln's plan and they had a plan of their own. And Congress, the radical Republicans in Congress refused to seat the officials that those three states sent to Washington, D.C. Congress, remember the legislative branch, and more specifically the Republicans or radical Republicans in Congress led by Thaddeus Stevens from Pennsylvania and Charles Sumner from Massachusetts, they, they wanted harsh punishment for those who represented the Confederacy. And they also wanted to help the former slaves get back on their feet. In short, they felt that Lincoln was too lenient on the Southern states. Now, quickly, lenient. You ever had a situation in which you did something really, really, really bad and you knew that your parents were gonna take your phone away from you for 12 months. You knew you were in really big trouble, whatever you did, and then as you're about to get your punishment from your parents, they say, you know what? Don't ever do that again. And that was a punishment. That's the definition of lenient. That's lenient. 
So your parents, they took it easy on you. They didn't give you the, the harsh punishment that you thought that you deserved. Congress felt that Abraham Lincoln was doing the same thing with the Confederacy. And so they had their own plan for reconstruction. On July 2nd, 1864, to respond to Lincoln's 10% plan, Congress passed the Wade Davis bill. Now what this did is it gave the power for reconstruction to Congress and not the president. Here are some of the highlights. It, it said that states would have to adopt a new constitution that abolished slavery and also prevented Confederate officers and government officials from voting. Additionally, the Wade Davis bill called for a majority of the male population of each state to take a loyalty oath. Now, this is a sharp contrast to President Lincoln's 10% plan. Now, the fight is on at this point because the Congress passed the Wade Davis bill to reduce some of President Lincoln's power over Reconstruction. And the last step for a bill to actually become a law is it has to be signed by the president. Now, the president also has the power, the veto power to reject the bill. And that's exactly what President Lincoln did. And this upset many of the radical Republic Republicans in Congress because they believe that Congress should have control over reconstruction. Now, one thing that Congress and the president did agree on was the Freedmen's Bureau. Now, the Freedmen's Bureau was created to help the former slaves get back on their feet. It would distribute food, um, set up schools for freedmen, and it also help freedmen find jobs and get land as well. Sadly, in April of 1865, while he was watching a play, Abraham Lincoln is assassinated. The next morning, he passes away. Next in line is his vice president, Andrew Johnson. Now it's important to keep in mind that Andrew Johnson is a Southerner. He is from Tennessee. And that fact is going to shape his reconstruction plan for the United States. Now, Andrew Johnson was much more lenient uh, than Lincoln. And it was actually easier for states to be readmitted and all Southerners could vote. Unfortunately, his personal racism prevented him from giving the right to vote to the freedmen. Here are some of the particulars of his plan. He, he wanted a loyalty oath from the majority of the male population. States must abolish slavery and ratify the 13th Amendment. But again, freedmen remain vulnerable because his plan actually placed the same people who were in power before the Civil War back in power after the Civil War. And this resulted in widespread negative treatment of the freedmen living in the South. The radical Republicans in Congress were very upset that his plan was similar to Lincoln's and it also failed to help former slaves in the areas of land, voting rights, and protection under the law. Additionally, additionally, Johnson pardoned, that means he forgave over 13,000 former Confederates because he ultimately believed that white men alone must manage the South. And so Southern states quickly rushed to agree to Johnson's terms because they knew that he was even more lenient than Lincoln and that he believed that white people were superior to black people. So Andrew Johnson would really frustrate members of Congress with his views on reconstruction and his lack of protection for the freedmen. And Congress and Andrew Johnson are gonna have a knockdown, drag out fight over reconstruction. And I've done a lesson over that. It's titled Johnson versus the Radical Republicans. So I encourage you to check that out so you can know more of the details of the fight between Andrew Johnson and the Republicans over Reconstruction. Well, you know, this war, it, it took a while to actually get to both sides shooting at each other. And once the war was over, 
Then came the hard work of putting the country back together again. And there was a lot that took place. And ultimately, Reconstruction fails to take care of the freedmen. And so life is very difficult for freedmen living in the South until things change in the 1950s. Well, that's our lesson for the day. I thank you so much for watching. Please check the Vision Chasers website for more tips and tools to help you as you chase your vision of success. Also, please feel free to download the worksheet that goes along with this video to further your knowledge of the United States Reconstruction Plans. Thank you so much for watching and until we meet again, please keep chasing the vision. Bye.